Shalom, giving honor and praise unto Yah, the creator and the maker of heaven and earth. My name is Yeshai Yisrael. This is part six entitled The Proposed Contradictions of the Old Testament Exposed. Let's go, brothers and sisters, into the book of Genesis, chapter 10, verse 5. Genesis 10, verse 5 says, By these were the owls of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families in their nations. Verse 20 says, These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries and in their nations. Verse 31 and 32. These are the sons of Shem. After their families. After their tongues. In their lands. After their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah. After their generations. In their nations. And by these were the nations divided. In the earth after the flood. So it's letting you know in Genesis chapter 10. That the nations were divided. After the flood, all right, and it was divided as stated by their families, by their tongues, in their lands. Now, let's go, brothers and sisters, into the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verse 1. It says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Now, let me just stop right here because the land of Shinar is, in the Bible, what archaeologists refer to as the land of Suma, S-U-M-E-R. All right, so where they was going to build, as we would know later in history, as the Tower of Babel, it says that they all have one language and one speech. And that the Most High frustrated their plans and confounded their languages. And so they left off to build the city. So nobody was able to communicate one with the other. So what Genesis 11 is showing you is the reason why the different nations in the world have different languages. Because they were trying to disrespect the Most High by trying to go up there and be like the Most High. So their plan of saying, well, let's not be scattered abroad actually backfired on them. So not only did they lose their unity and the um, ability to only have one stable language and their camaraderie. By, by, but by disrespecting the most high, they also lost the ability to all be one unit. And so they were scattered off from that point. And so getting back into understanding that Genesis 11 is giving you the reason why there are different languages upon the earth. It's not saying that it's a contradiction from verse or from chapter 10, verse 5, 20 and 31. It's just basically giving you the reason as stated as to why there's different languages. It's simple as that. Sometimes when you're reading any book, regardless of what the book is, you may read something after that'll let you know the reason why something happened prior to you reading that particular part. For instance, there can be a part A and a part B. When you're reading part B, in this case, for this conversation here, is in chapter 11. So sometimes part B will let you know why something that happened in part A, in this case being chapter 10. Now, to sit there and um, just show it in another example, when you're taking a test, let's say for like the city or something like that, like one of those things, like I know in New York, they have a thing what they call the chief as a newspaper and they go out um, maybe like every Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. And they have a list of city jobs, jobs that you could get with the city. And when you got to take the test for it, sometimes when you take those kind of tests, you get an answer, you put an answer in. And then as you go along in the test, you realize, oh man, the answer for number 24 or number 27 couldn't have been A because of something I'm reading in question number 35 or 36. So that's where logic comes into play. And for anybody who dealt with a city test like that can understand hopefully where a brother is coming from. Sometimes you'll read something later on and then it will let you know of something that happened prior to you reading that aspect. Okay, so that's the situation going on in Genesis 10 and in Genesis 11. And all thy getting, get understanding. All right. Now, let's go into Genesis chapter 11, verse 29. And it says, And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the daughter of Milcah, and the father of Iscah, 
but Sarai was barren. She had no child. Now, it says that you had Abram and his brother in this particular case, Nekor, that they took wives. But something that the Bible, no offense intended to the Bible, does not state emphatically is who was the direct relation of Melchah and Sarai. Now, what we are reading in many cases, they attempt to state that it's a contradictory thing. And let me explain where they're attempting to come from. The book of Genesis chapter 20, verse 12, if we will. And it says the following. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when the Most High caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy, this is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me. At every place whether we shall come, say ye, say of me, He is my brother. Now, one of the things to let it be noted and pointed out, this is a situation in which Abraham or Abram was speaking to one of the royalties in one of the lands in which he had came to. You see, and this particular person had Sarai uh, as not knowing that she was married to Abram as part of his, in what we will call today, his harem and so forth and so on. So that right there was a problem upon that particular person. So now the next situation to let it be known and understood is the definition of what a father and a mother is inside the mind of the people that we're reading of. My grandfather is my father. My grandmother is my mother. She's grand. Grand still means that you are part of. Okay, so let that be noted and understood. Now, in the book of Josephus, I like to use this as a reference periodically. We are going to go to book one, chapter five, verse five, right? So that way we can gain some understanding concerning this matter. And it says the following. Now, Abraham had two brethren, Nahor and Haran. Of these, Haran left a son. Lot, Lot was the name of the son, as also Sarai and Milcah, his daughters, and died among the Chaldeans in the city of the Chaldeans called Ur, and his monument is shown to this day. These married their nieces, Nahor married Milcah, and Abram married Sarai. So now let it be known and understood that the re direct relationship between Abram and Sarai was uncle and niece and not direct brother and sister. So now why would he then say to Sarai, oh, say to them, he is my brother. And then he was telling people, yes, this is my sister because nationally and family ties, yes, my niece can be my sister. My nephew can be my brother. But now if we're speaking about ge genealogy wise, and putting it in context of that sort, then that would have to mean that Sarai was the niece. That is to say, the Abram's brother's daughter. That's the situation with that. So, that's why when we can read and say, my father or my mother, that does not, dis that does not change the fact of your grandparents also being part of your father and your mother. That's why in all thy getting, get understanding. We have to leave sometimes the language of our oppressors and get into our language because most Shemitic, Asiatic, and even Hemetic African languages acknowledge that your grandmother is your mother. For instance, Abba in Hebrew means father. Abba also means ancestor. So you can't really fully distinguish between your father and your great grandfather once it comes down to Hebrew, unless you say the father of my father of my father. You have to say, um, Abi, Abi, Ab. That's how you have to say my great grandfather because there is no direct word in Hebrew for great grandfather because your grand great your great grandfather is your Abba he is your father we are the children of our ancestors that should be logical okay now the next thing to want to sit there and point out brothers and sisters is if we go to Leviticus chapter eighteen verse nine 
Because, see, the reason why I want to go over this is because according to those who state that the Old Testament contradicts itself, these are supposed to be one of the biggest punchlines. Yeah, we got them Hebrews now, man. No, you don't. Um, Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 9. And it says this, The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. So now, let it be known and understood who was the speaker and who was being spoken to. That has to be noted and understood. And that is speaking to the children of Israel, which is the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, who were the ancestors in that case of the Israelites? Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go and see what the scripture says concerning them in one aspect. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Verse 1 to verse 3. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep them and do them. The Most High, our King, made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Most High made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us who are all of us here alive this day. So let it be known and understood that the same covenant that Abraham had is not the same covenant that the Most High made with the children of Israel. So that's why you can see in certain cases where a man might marry his niece and so forth and so on and it not be against the law of the Most High. Let it be noted and understood what mother and father meant. And let it also be noted to the people who want to sit there and state, well, Abraham married his half sister. Um, black people don't talk about half brother and half sister. That's not even our lingo. No matter of fact, there's no Hebrew word for half brother or half sister. There's brother, that's your direct either son of your mother or son of your father. And then there's the national term for the same word, ak, which means brother. The same thing for sister. When I, as a black man, sit there and say, I like sisters, I'm not talking about my biological sister to sit there and date. You understand what I'm saying? To court with, to start a relationship with, to possibly be married to. I'm not talking about my biological sister, but I'm still talking about sisters. That is our lingo as a people. And being that we're speaking about who? Chaldean people and Aramean people who are black people, the ancestors of the Israelites. We have to also understand that there's you could take the boy out the country, but can't take the country out the boy so much. So when it sits there and says that she is my sister, the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother that's just showing you that Abram knew what the relation was you understand so hopefully that should be known and understood now getting back into explaining Deuteronomy 5 verse 3 the covenant that Israel had as we see in Leviticus 18 is not in the same thing that Abraham had so without understanding brother and sister not understanding what Josephus pointed out and not understanding the linguistics of the people you you sit there and start thinking that Abram was blessed even though he was doing incest with his sister. And so this is the kind of stuff that people who don't read Hebrew, who don't read sources, and who no offense intended, like to go online to try to sit there and bash the Israelites, who no disrespect intended. Maybe, no offense, brother or sister, you put too much trust inside of an Israelite camp or inside of an Israelite congregation. What does Psalms teach you? It's better to trust in the Most High than to trust in man. So now when you put your trust, oh my goodness, this teacher is so nice. And then you wind up saying, oh, that teacher ain't living up to what he or she should be doing. And so forth and so on. Now you want to sit there and turn your back on the camp. Now you want to sit there and turn your back on the school. And now you want to go online and try to find... Are there anything wrong with the Israelites? So let me see. It's because you never put your trust inside of the most high God. You put your trust inside of flesh. You see the book of Isaiah 30. It speaks about the Egyptians. It says the Egyptians are men and not the most high. What does it also say about the children of Israel? Most high called Jacob a worm. When you go in the book of Isaiah. So the point I'm getting to brothers and sisters is that um, people are always going to be either good or either bad. So that's why you never put your trust and confidence in a man. You never sit there and state, that man is a master teacher. Because what you have done by saying such and such is a master teacher, and you have not carried a baton from that point, it just means that you stayed a slave student. Master, slave, teacher, student. If you are not a master teacher, and these people that you're revering as master teachers are elders, 
Some of them have passed away and you have not stepped in that line. That means you stayed exactly where you was before you became a student of that teacher. You have not advanced and that's not good. So with that, brothers and sisters, I say shalom.